Good morning. Good morning and welcome to um, Real Talk with Devin Will. It is Monday. <clears throat> it's 9.03, so that means we're right on time. <laughs> what? what? In his world. Well, we're right on time. We are <laughs> slamming right on it. Uh, we hope that um, <clears throat> your weekend has been good and um, <clears throat> that uh, you are ready to attack the, um, the work week with, with vim and vigor and excitement and positivity. Um, we're here to help you do that, not only with um, <clears throat> your romantic relationships, but your personal relationships as well. Although, I think this morning's topic is going to really concentrate on, 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 on y'all married folk. Yes. <laughs> what we will be talking about today is um, opposite sex friendships um, in a marriage. Is it appropriate? What does it work for you? Um, let's let's chat. You know what? I know that a lot of people will say that. Well, I had these friends when I came into this relationship, <clears throat> and and that's under and that's understandable. People mm -hmm. have friends, um, friend groups, and the like when they come into a relationship. Um, but as we've talked about in our previous episodes, um, the relationship is now the, your relationship with your wife or your husband is a primary, is a primary relationship in your life. Yes. Um, uh, primary human relationship, you, I mean, your relationship with Christ is, of course, <clears throat> above that, but <clears throat> as far as humans go, your relationship with your spouse is a primary relationship. And, and, and I, I, I said this early, I think, I think in the first cast, when I was talking to the guys, I said, here's the deal, that um, this is about what you're willing to give up for the relationship. So sometimes other relationships um, are put on the back burner for sure. They have to suffer sometimes. <clears throat> yeah, and that's, you know, and, 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 and I would, and some people would say, well, that doesn't seem fair. Well, no, it's the fairest thing of all, really, because you have to be fair first to the relationship. You have to give the relationship um, that you're dealing with, especially in marriage, the the most <clears throat> opportunity to, to succeed. And if yes. uh, outside relationships with people going to affect that then you have to make that decision what's more important and what did i just say i just said i just told you the most important relationship is of course the relationship you have with your spouse and you have to put that spouse first <clears throat> otherwise um it could it could uh, damage your marriage relationship and um like like willie said the ultimate <clears throat> relationship for you now once you have made that commitment is your spouse and that's it you know what and, and i know that um you have everybody has all sorts of different sorts of ways that they end up in relationship with people <clears throat> and now when i say relationship i don't mean romantic relationship i mean we end up partnering with people on all sorts of different fronts personally this one this guy here ends up um partnering with people all, all over the country because i do live cast and podcast and um, social activism online. So I end up partnering with all sorts of people. Um, people like Elizabeth Blackney, people like Shirley Huzar, who calls and talks <laughs> and talks and talks. Well, we love Shirley. We but, love her. But uh, um, the first thing, the, the dangers of, of this, um, and, and that's why it's so important to get to know your partner before you enter into a marriage to know how what their feelings are about you know opposite sex friendships and and even your your same sex friends um to know how they feel about that because people can be jealous even about your same sex friends and the time that you spend with them and you know you feel like you're ignoring them if you're spending all your weekend out with the guys playing basketball or golf or something yeah. like that they it can it can damage your marriage Stop. unless now you may know your partner that you maybe you want to be with your girlfriends you know you've made this arrangement you're going to be with the girls and he's going to be with the guys that gets to be a little difficult once the kids come along but just leave them in the house <laughs> but um if you know your partner well enough that you know they're not going to be jealous because you have uh, an opposite sex friendship 
and um, you have come to that agreement and you know for sure, then that's a different story. But if you know, if you find out that he, he or she may have a little jealousy because of something they've had in previous relationships, that, and, and that's the thing about bringing along baggage. Sometimes bringing along baggage can make that person be, t you know, terribly jealous about you spending time with uh, another man that it, and then there's no sexual part in there, but you're just friends, but he is jealous and you have to respect that. You know what, it's easy for, and it's easy for people, as you can probably figure out, to be uncomfortable. Everybody brings, everybody, no matter how confident you seem, everybody brings a little uncomfortableness. Everybody brings a little bit of, um, self-doubt with them wherever they go and um people wonder so why do you want to spend time with this person everybody wants everybody wants to know that and am uh, i not enough for you all of those questions <laughs> um so <clears throat> yes i know I, 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 I was saying people develop relationships all sorts of different kinds of ways um but again, we go back to the. I mean, we go back to the basics. The most important relationship is, is your spousal relationship. That's the most important one. And if any other relationship is interfering with that relationship, then you have to dial back the other one. And then you have to have good enough friends. To, I'm, I'm sorry, you have to have good enough friends that understand that. Yes. See, and that's the deal. If if your guy friends don't get that you're married now. And I'm talking about I'm talking about my guy friends or Debbie or Debbie's guy friends don't realize that that that, that, that we're that we's married now. Um, color purple reference every day. <laughs> I was married. Now. Every day in his house is a color purple <laughs> reference. Yeah, we've already seen a movie where um, it's mostly black people, and black women are pretty much the heroes. <laughs> they, they they did that movie before, again. They already did that movie. It's called Color Purple. Um, but anyway, so. If your friends don't get it, then you had the wrong friends to start with. Then those are relationships that you have to reassess. If your friend, if your guy friends don't get it, it's like, hey man, why don't you come out and play some ball with us? No, nah, man, I'm gonna be home this weekend. You gonna be home this weekend? Yeah, man. Like, remember when we went to that whole thing at the church and, and I made y'all wear tuxes and stuff? Y'all remember and y'all came and drank up all my liquor? Y'all remember that? <laughs> yeah, that was my wedding. Yeah, I got married. Yeah, and I ain't get married to y'all. And if your friends don't get that, then maybe that's okay that you have dialed back those relationships a little bit. Maybe they not meant to be your friends Anymore. if they're not uh, in agreement with you being successful in your marriage. And, that, and that's the deal because everybody stands. You know what? You just don't get people involved in your in your in your wedding because everybody looks good in a suit or everybody looks good in a dress. They're supposed to be encouraging your marriage all along. And a part of that encouragement is um, not pulling you away from it for their entertainment. Uh, and if they, don't, if they don't get that, um, then you got to reassess, those, like again, you got to reassess those, those friendships and maybe dial those back a bit. Um, and that's why I love my pastors so much because when they do a wedding, they ask everyone that's at that wedding to be committed to helping that marriage. And that was some of the, the reason why I wanted to start doing this. Um, it's because it's a part of helping other people that you know make it through their marriage. It, how they say about raising a child, it takes a village. It takes a village too to, <laughs> to have a strong marriage. You have to have partners within there that are will, fringe friends who are willing to back you up. And that's where it comes with uh, the, the plus sides of having opposite sex relationships. Because I feel like sometimes uh, an opposite, another man can tell you, give you some, some advice on, hey, you may not want to do that. This is not too good for, in a man's point of view, that, you know, it's going to help you to be, you be a better wife. If they're looking out for you in that aspect and they're not coming and flirting and doing, you know, all the things like that, that person is out to help your marriage. So in that case, opposite sex relationships can be a plus for a marriage. Yeah, but don't have any opposite sex relationships in, in secret. No. All no you, secrets. All your opposite sex friends 
you make sure that your partner knows who they are, what your relationship is, how you met them, all that stuff. You have to be completely openly honest with that because if yes. you because because if you don't, you will crap can your relationship. I promise. So just make make sure that everybody everybody knows who everybody is and what they you know what and, and what their place is and what their place is and there and everybody knows that place now and and and, and Debbie mentioned flirting flirting is not okay no it's not okay it's not okay now i know some guys will go well you, you know what uh you know what I, I was flirting with people before you you're under, you, you you know what i don't mean nothing well it meant something when they flirted with you mm-hmm. flirting is not okay your flirting life once once you have one of these guys, once you have one of these, your flirting life has ended. You know who you can flirt with? You can flirt with your niece, who is four. <laughs> you can flirt with her all day long. You can hold her up and hug her and take her to the park. And you can do all well, if she, if she's four. Your niece. That's it. You're done. <laughs> That's the end of your flirt game. And the opposite sex flirting is not acceptable. Not it's not okay. And, and I'm, I'm just, and I, I'm gonna tell you, and, and some of y'all are, are, you know, y'all got your, y'all doing this now, you got all, I'm telling you. Because <laughs> I've heard people say, and even I said it in my, in the beginning of marriage, a little flirting, there's nothing wrong with that. Horrendous. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Write this down. Don't flirt. Flirting is not okay. Because flirting can lead into other things. You know, you're joking about, oh. That's the purpose of flirting. Just... Isn't that the yes. purpose of flirting? Isn't that where flirting. into other things. Isn't, isn't this where flirt, flirting starts and supposed to end with you naked? <laughs> <laughs> isn't that what it's supposed to do? <laughs> when you're flirting with somebody who ain't four and ain't your niece, the idea is so that somebody at some point going to be naked. <laughs> so don't do it. Don't, don't do, do it. it. It, you know what it, it, it it's bad for your relationship and it and it and it and it pulls people into your circle um, in a way that's first of all dishonest um, and detrimental so don't do it don't do it that's not a part of your same-sex friendships and you, and you can't you can't fall back and go well we just friends I, I I don't have any I don't have any in any women friends or associates that I flirt with no, no, nope. no, you, you, you don't. There's some, there's some ladies that I work with, um, and people that I work with online. I'm not flirting with anybody. And like you said, the reason for that is because flirting can turn into an emotional affair. And what an emotional affair is, is when you are, instead of, you know, you're, helping each other in your marriage you and this opposite sex person you are going to him about problems within your marriage problems like uh you know he doesn't do this and blah 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 i, I just really like um spending time with you because i feel like i can talk about myself i can talk to you i can talk more comfortably the only person you should be comfortable talking intimately with is your spouse and you, and Jesus. You know that makes you know that brings up a uh, and I guess I can tell the story now. It's been I don't know 30, 30 plus years. Um, I have a, had, a, had, a, had a roommate <clears throat> and who had had a girlfriend and the girlfriend actually lived in, she lived in the um, in a sorority house, but occasionally like in college we spend weeks. In our apartment, and I, I, I was at a point where I was going to move out, and she said, "You can't." She was, we we're just in an apartment together, and she said, "You can't move out." And I said, "Why not?" She said, and "She said to me, who will I talk to?" I said, "You talk to Rob. You talk to your boyfriend." <laughs> and that's a bad place to be. Well, they're no, they're no longer married. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> they're no longer married uh, because and I, I wasn't I wasn't interested in any sort of relationship with her for a couple of reasons I, you know what she was alright but I didn't like her that much and she was my roommate's girlfriend who he was madly in love with uh, so that would have made me a jerk but, uh, but the problem was that she wasn't ready for any of that either 
And that one comment let me know early that she wasn't she wasn't ready for any of that either. Who will I talk to? <laughs> talk to Rob. Mm -hmm. Talk to the person you get naked with. Try that, <laughs> which ain't me. Uh, so I, 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 again, so emotional relationships are every bit as as detrimental um, as physical relationships. Yeah. And, and, and the reason is, is because you're sharing something that's deep normally, and they, and they tend to go on longer. They tend to go on sometimes for years. Sometimes it's more detrimental that, than a physical affair. Like you said, sometimes because it's emotional, your heart is in it and your spirit is con t attached to that person. And... Um, it can damage you more th when you break up with them than if you were having sex. So um, that's the, a, a big step in, in having opposite sex relationships and being emotionally attached to that person. Um, it can damage your marriage. Yeah, so yeah, I su so I guess we asked the question, but we answered the question, don't do it. Listen, we're gonna take a little break, we'll be back um, after this, um, commercial message from Boss Hair Boutique. We'll be right back after this. Y'all pay attention. If you're local, write all this stuff down. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into this business, and, and what your business is all about, and what makes you and what you do unique. I'm Carla Jordan. I'm a professional hairstylist. I've been a professional hairstylist for over 10 years. Um, what makes my business unique is that I'm very big on education. I'm also um, very considerate about my customer's time. I know a lot of people um, have complaints when they go to a salon about wait time and a hundred people waiting. It's never like that at Boss Hair Boutique. I take my um, time with each client. I also um, give them personal attention. So whenever you come to Boss Hair Boutique, you will get that personal, professional touch and attention. Is there something that you specialize in? Because this business has become very much specialized. People who specialize in, in braiding, people who specialize in natural hair. Is there something that you specialize in? Not necessarily. I specialize in trying to meet my clients' needs. I do a variety of styles from relaxers to shortcuts to natural styles to quick weaves to sew-ins and even some braids and um, dreadlock styles. I really try not to specialize in one particular arena because I don't want my clients to have to hop around from shop to shop. I believe when people do that, they um, compromise the integrity of their hair and they don't get everything they need out of each stylist that they may go to. So I try to um, provide versatility to my clients. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. So tell people where you're located and what, what your hours are. I'm located on North 56th Street at 7402 Corporate Square in Building 800 Suite D. Uh, my hours are pretty much, I don't want to say 24 hours, but I am available at a, a lot of odd times to my clients because I do um, like to take care of my clients personally. So, but um, my office hours would, for the majority, would be Tuesday through Saturday, um, mainly from nine to six, but I do stay late on um, Thursday and Friday. So, so how are people going to get a hold of you? I can be reached at 813-770-1174. What's that again? 813-770-1174 and you can also follow me on Instagram at Boss Hair Boutique. All right. Well, Carla, thank you ever so much for spending some time with us. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I know that a lot of people are looking for a personal stylist like yourself to take care of all of their needs as opposed to just one thing that some people do mm -hmm. and not being in the salon um, six and seven hours um, every time they come. So that's, re that's very, very special. Again, thanks for spending time with us. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you, we'll talk to you very soon. All right. Thank you. So you. Thank you. Oh, 
Oh, we're back. <clears throat> we're back. And our front. I told you I'd fix this lighting thing. It's like Tampa Stadium. <laughs> very bright. It is very bright. I told you. I told you I'd fix it though. How's it, how's it look on the on the thing? Looks good on the thing, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Yay! It's kind of old school, and it's kind of it's kind of hoodish. It is. <laughs> it's definitely hoodish. Yeah, this, this is from the um, Mo Money, Mo Money, Mo Money um, <clears throat> Internet Lighting Company. But it works. We're starting out. You can't see it. <laughs> you don't know what I like. Don't remember to you. Um, yeah, we were talking about uh, this morning. Is it a good idea to have se same sex relationships um, when you're married? Um, I, I, I guess the answer is it, it really depends on how in depth uh, how th those relationships are. You know what? I know that people, people, some of y'all again are going, but you brought some relationships with you and I know that you were friends before maybe you had friends in college uh, or in high school um, and you guys were friends since you were six and um, they're and they're and they're plutonic there are and, 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 and they may be not going any other way and this person knows you very well and this person may even be married themselves yes um, so I, I, I understand that those relationships come with um, a lot of folks I get that uh, but 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 again, our, our our thought is that you have to make you have to be very very careful. I think I think that's that's most well most people get screwed up. They're not careful. Mm -hmm. They're casual, and they uh, and they and they make assumptions when maybe you shouldn't make those assumptions about first of all the, the, your friend relationship and make assumptions about your spousal relationship because the assumption is well I married you. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it it may hurt their feelings, or the, it may. Uh, I I learned the hard way that you know if if somebody's flirting with me or you know in the public where I am and stuff, and I come home and tell my husband about it, he didn't like that. Strangely enough, I didn't like it. I don't <laughs> like it, and dudes so, don't like it. No, they don't. They don't want to. They don't want to hear that some some dude was flirting with their sweetheart, and first of all, they weren't there. Um, and it was happening, and 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 they and they don't want to hear that their wife thinks it's okay. They don't. I just shoved it off because I know where my heart was, but and I thought it was funny. And a lot of us as women, it makes you feel good, you know, to know, yeah, I still got it, you know, <laughs> you know. But um, your husband doesn't want to know that most of the time. Them, some men, you may be comfortable with that. But um, I found out that mine was most are not. I'm telling you, most dudes aren't. You're honest. They're, they're honest. They're honest. They don't like it. They do not like it. So um, there are there are certain things that I don't need to know. I don't want to know. And I don't like. So um, again, we have to be really, really conscious, and we have to really get to know your partner. I think we get gets, gets back to what we said before. You have to really get to know your partner to see mm -hmm. you know where they are and all of this. And and, and if you don't know what that is, then you, you need to find, you need to find out, you need to find out first. Communication. We go back to all the staples of a relationship, communicate. And I'm happy that I did communicate some things to him and that he was honest enough to tell me, don't tell me that. I don't like it, you know? And so I don't anymore. You just go on and with your little own inner self and just say, you know, I still got it, but the husband doesn't doesn't want to know. <laughs> not not at all. Not at all. We don't want we don't want to know. Um, there you go. And 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 of course, some of you are going. It's because it, cause it don't happen to you. Well, no, it doesn't happen to me. <laughs> no twenty-something girl comes to me and flirts with me ever, ever, <laughs> because I look like a flipping dad. <laughs> Nobody flirts with their dad. That's just weird. Um, that doesn't happen. Um, but that's not it. But that's not it. And it may be something that is um, that is based in, in some insecurity. It could be. So we all have insecurities. So you, so you're not going to so you're not going to protect me in my insecurity. You're not at all. Let me hang out to dry like that. <laughs> that's not very nice. 
That's I not, would never do that. That's not very nice at all. Uh, because we, I, because part of being in, in, in a relationship, especially a relationship that's lasted 30 years, 30 plus years, is that at some point somebody's got to, and, and it changes, and, and, and it could change in, 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 in a moment. Um, somebody's got to protect the other. Yes. We're always protecting the others. Um, some people uh, use the phrase, I got your back. But sometimes it ain't the back that's the problem. Sometimes you got to be up front. Ride or die. Sometimes you get. <laughs> sometimes you got to take the. Sometimes you got to take the hit. Sometimes you got to be up front and take the hit, uh, or 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 change the direction, or 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 or, or whatever. So I mean, it's none of this leadership from the back, where where I mean, maybe may, may be more safe. Um, so you got to protect the person. You got to protect. You know their insecurities. You know what they feel insecure about, or you should. You find don't? out. And if you don't, find out. If you don't, find out. Um, that's the only way that relationship is going to work is you know your your spouse. Um, and sometimes you may know them better than you know yourself. I find that out with Willie. He knows me, you know, <laughs> better sometimes than he knows himself. I and attention. I know him better than he knows himself. I know what he's going to do. I know what he's feeling. Uh, in certain situations, he he may he may shut down, won't say anything, but I know what's going on in that head. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I shut down for a minute. <laughs> sorry, I, I just I just shut down. <laughs> and I think shutting down is his his is typical male stuff. Um, part part of the time I do that. I, I I'll, I'll just tell you is that. You want to make sure, and I, I'm, and you guys know who who watch these programs already know that I'm a real big believer about making sure that you're very careful what comes out of your pie hole, um, and you can't let every emotion and every thought that you have here come out of here. Um, so sometimes there's power in the tone. So that there's sometimes you have to go. Sometimes. Sometimes, but you have to be, but you have to be able to do it on purpose. You can't do it because you don't know what else to do. You have to be able to do it on purpose. Um, anyway, so we were talking. So what are we, so so basically, are we uh, are are we happy about same sex or or, or opposite relationships, opposite sex, sex relationships, relationships. <laughs> same sex relationships? And <laughs> anyway, that's a whole other show, and we're not going to do that <laughs> to that show today. And even and even if you happen to be in a same sex marriage, it still it it it, it still, still applies. Works the doesn't same it? Way. it still applies. It still works the same because way. the concept is the same. It's it's having somebody on the exterior of your relationship mean as much, or or maybe mean as much as as your interior relationship. So it means the same thing, doesn't it? Yeah, it works the same. It works the same way. What? I would think it would be even more difficult in a same-sex relationship to if 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 two if if there was a lesbian relationship and one of the partners had a really good guy friend mm -hmm. <laughs> it would seem to be a little well in the whole world is a little, a little weird a little wacky <laughs> <laughs> for sure but so if there if some, if some of you are watching who happen to be in same-sex relationships uh, I like to. I, I don't know because because I'm. We'd a, like to hear. From I'm you. a voyeur. I just yeah. I just like to know because it seems to me that it would be the same. The concept because the concept we're talking about would be exactly the same. Yes. So what you got on the piece of paper? Over? <laughs> Nothing else really. But I wanted to uh, to talk about how I deal with because I have work fr friends that are the same uh, opposite sex and stuff and and I have to spend time with. And a lot of my coworkers find it weird when I would call my husband and say, "Well, I'm going to be this place and that place with uh, my my boss, who was also my friend. We had many years of working together, and we talk and everything like that. But I always let my husband know that we're going to lunch at this time, and we're doing this at this time, so that when people see me out with this person or something." You know, it doesn't get back to him, and he's unaware. That's the whole thing about being uh, uh, about being open. Um, yeah, and I actually I knew this guy. I, I'd known this guy for a long time for for a long time too. Um, but it was all but 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 it was always nice to know. Oh, I'm gonna 
ride up to the meeting um, with this person um, in, instead of driving my car I'm going to ride up with them and or we're going to go to, or, 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 and after we're going to have lunch and and that was always it was always very very respectful and that was always made you that always made you feel like you were in the loop so it, it is the communication piece that was very very important because y'all know what happens so that kind of crap gets back to people second and third hand and destroys relationships mm -hmm. because there are people out there some of y'all have friends acquaintances um, that are ready to see your relationship ex explode and implode. Not everybody who's your friend is for you. It's for you. <laughs> you know, so and y'all know. And some of y'all know. <laughs> and, some of and some of you who are watching it have experienced just that. So, you know what, it's really important to be open, to say, oh, so like last night, I'm sitting here, pretty much right here. Yes. <laughs> and the phone rings, and it's my friend Shirley from California. <sighs> I love Shirley so much. She is so awesome. And, and she, she is. She's, she's amazing. And, and I see it, Shirley, and I, don't, and I know that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in for 45 minutes at least. You click the, you cl you click the button, you're going to be in for 45 minutes. Uh, so I click the button and I say hello and I'm talking and I'm talking and I think Debbie here you're talking I think she figures out even before I say it's Shirley that is Shirley because who else mm -hmm. um, and um, I don't run off to the back room and have a conversation with Shirley I sit right here to have a conversation with Shirley because that's what you do and that's what you and that that way you keep it open um, Anytime you have a quote secret relationship because you're trying not to hurt the other person um, and you don't let anybody else know, you're actually crap canning your own relationship. So don't so don't do it. Um, if you're going to have opposite sex relationships with with people, friendships with with folks, even business relationships with, with people, you have to be incredibly open. Honest. You'd be you have to, you, have to, you just have to be an open book, um, and you have to open that book first before somebody else reads a chapter out of it in their own words. Otherwise, it's going to be. Otherwise, it, it 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 could be a hellish nightmare. So, my advice, if I have advice, is to be very careful, and to have very few. Very few. Um, introduce. Make sure that, if you can, that your a person that you're in a, in, in a opposite sex relationship with, as a friend relationship or a business relationship, if you can introduce them to your spouse. If they can know, if they can know, uh, I, feel, I feel like Tanya now. <laughs> <laughs> if they can know, then do. If you can make those introductions, do. Yes. If you can, because that's really, really important. Um, that puts everybody at ease. That puts, and you want everybody at ease. You never want those relationships to be um, tenuous or, you don't want that. Life Where you wrong. feel like you're doing something wrong. Or somebody else feels like you might be doing something wrong. So the idea is to make sure that everybody knows who everybody is and what everybody, I, I like Debbie said, everybody's part in it. And if you could do that, you could probably survive it. And understand that sometimes some of, so some of these relationships that you had since childhood may have to end. <laughs> they may have to. The relationship that you had in college may have to go away. And you may only see that person once a year or something like that. Then you can't be talking on the phone with them. You can't be. You can't um, be Facebook them on your private Facebook account. No. Texting them on your private text. You have two phones. No. <laughs> no. The answer is no. No. And don't give me that face, that Trump face. <laughs> no. No. You, 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 are, you are a grown up now. You have made a commitment. Live up to your commitments. All right, it's almost time for you to go, isn't it? Yes, it is. All righty. Well, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So until we see you, let, see you again. Go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness' sakes, y'all take care of yourself. Peace. Peace. We love you.